According to all known laws of speedrunning, there is no way Scooty should be able to run every game for the GameCube. His brain is too small to understand that many games. Scooty, of course, runs them all anyways, because Scooty doesn't care what humans think is impossible. Today we're playing Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. If you're unfamiliar with the Scooby-Doo series, each story follows Scooby and the gang, in which they investigate spooky happenings and try to uncover what's behind it. And this game is no different, only this time the gang has been kidnapped and it's up to Scooby to save the day. The speedrun starts off with us outside the Mystic Manor, and the first thing we do is collect some Scooby snacks in order to go inside. In this game, there are multiple gates and doors that require Scooby snacks to open, so for the entire duration of the run, we want to make sure to grab as many snacks as we can. Once we get enough snacks, we go to pay this little robot thing and head into the manor. And once inside the manor, we collect the key as well as some more snacks to get into the main door, and then we use the key to open the door and talk to Holly who gives us some clues. We then head outside to grab a shovel and then dig at this flower which gives us another key opening up the gate to the Smuggler's Cove, and inside the Smuggler's Cove we come up on our first skip, which we have to use this fish barrel to jump on top of the roof to collect some snacks. One thing to mention in this game is the mechanics. When running around a Scooby you can't really pivot 180 degrees like you can in most platformers, but instead you have to roll your analog stick around in order for him to turn around more quickly, which is very important to keep in mind throughout the run. Making our way through the cove, we reach another shortcut where we have to jump up on this raised box in order to open the other door to continue to the level, and then we make our way to a bridge that is covered in oil which makes it to where we can no longer jump. There is an item in this game that will allow us to jump on the oil, but since this is the only part of the run that has these, it's a waste of time to go out of our way to buy it. At the end of the oil bridge, we unlock the power up that allows us to double jump, and then intentionally fall off the edge to reset us back at the beginning of the level. Now that we have the double jump power, we can use the warp portal to head back to the mystery machine at the front of the manor to go to our next area. The next area is the hedge maze, and all we have to do at the start is collect as many snacks as we can and make our way to the end of the level. After making our way through the hedge maze, we reach a gate that is locked and we have to figure out how to open it, but by running at a very specific angle using the D-pad, we can clip through the corner and skip ahead. Now that we've skipped into the cave, we have to collect four keys in order to open up the following door, which we'll use later. We then continue deeper into the cave, dodging some crabs and then jumping along some boats. The thing about this game as a platformer is that if you're consistent with your pace, the enemies are always on a loop, so it'll be very easy to predict their movements and to know where they'll be after you've played the game a couple times. So the whole point of us going through all the caves is to come out at the end and to grab the item on the top of the mountain. The item that we have to grab is the football helmet which will allow us to charge into enemies, killing them, which is something that we'll have to do in fighting the final boss. Now that we have the football helmet, we backtrack our way to the Smuggler's Cove and continue making our way through there. This section of Smuggler's Cove is blocked off similar to the closed gate that we were supposed to find another way around, but we can use this barrel to jump around and over the wall blocking us, allowing us to skip ahead in the level, which as you can see isn't the easiest thing to do for someone on their first try. After skipping into the factory, all we have to do now is to navigate through the fish factory, jumping along all of these moving belts while all trying not to fall off. We then collect some keys in order to make it through the next door, and then jump over this ledge in order to skip a huge part of the level to make it through the factory. Once outside the factory, we make our way through the docks, and then jump off this trampoline and collect some snacks. And right here, you're not supposed to take the exit back to the mystery machine, or else you'll have to run through the entire area from the beginning, like I'm having to do, but instead, after collecting the snacks, you want to drop down and go into the cave that is right below. Similar to all the other levels, all we have to do is platform across and make our way to the end of the caves, and at the end of the caves we reach a door that we have to open up with 500 snacks, which sent us through the spooky forest. In the spooky forest, we have to navigate our way through and make it to the lighthouse, and once in the lighthouse, we have to headbutt the button at the bottom to send the light all the way to the top of the lighthouse, and then sprint all the way up the stairs before the light reaches the top and gets sent back down. We then break the light at the top of the lighthouse, which gives us the ability to ground pound, which is another move that we'll have to use in order to beat the final boss, as well as skip a few more areas. Now that we have the ground pound, we have to backtrack all the way back to the first cave that we went into where we collected the keys, opening up the door on the ramp, and in order to get to this gate, you're supposed to get another power-up that allows you to climb steep surfaces, but with the ground pound move, we can lure this fish monster near the gate, ground pound it, and then use the extra height that we get from jumping on it to open up the gate to the next area. Now that we're in the next area of the cave, all we have to do is make our way to the top before it floods with water, and this area is very reliant on the water filling up, so there isn't really any way to speed it up, except for just waiting for the water to fill up. After escaping the underground, we make it to the graveyard, which requires us to have to do a couple of platforming type puzzles, which we then have to jump along these tombs and knock over other vases to open up the next gate. And after that, we make it to the ghost that is haunting Daphne, and this is the first boss fight of the run. And the way that we kill the ghost is to ground pound the open casket so that they create a vortex, and whenever the ghost floats by the vortex, it will suck him in and damage him. After sucking the ghost in three times, we finish off the boss. And after killing off the ghost, we unlock the umbrella, which allows us to float over long gaps. 
Now that we have the umbrella, we can head back to the Smuggler's Cove and go into the underground. In the underground, we have to navigate across some ledges and dodge some falling boulders before making our way to the next big skip. Now this skip is probably the one that has frustrated me the most as the jumps have to be pretty precise, but similar to the barrel jump to get over the wall in Smuggler's Cove, there is a tiny invisible ledge along the wall that will allow us to jump to another just as tiny invisible ledge that will then allow us to jump to the top of the room, skipping us up to the next level. Once in the next room, we use the umbrella that we just acquired to float up to the top of this shaft and to make our way into the laboratory. And once in the laboratory, we have to make a pretty precise double jump and then ground pound that allows us to skip onto this hanging fixture so that we can jump along a couple more in order to make it to the button that turns off the electricity for the room, allowing us to go into the next room. This next room has another pretty difficult skip, but not due to the ledges being small, but due to losing vision of Scooby after a couple jumps, and all we have to do is jump forward and backwards in order to get on multiple different ledges, and after doing that a couple times, we run to the right and jump along making it to this catwalk. Now at this point in the run, you're supposed to have 850 snacks, which I unfortunately didn't have enough, so I have to backtrack for a couple minutes collecting enough snacks to open the door. And once you have enough snacks to open the door, you can proceed on. After paying to open the door, all we have to do for this room is to run directly to the door in the back, and similar to the gate skip in the cemetery, we use the d-pad to run at a very precise angle to clip through the door and into the next room. In the next room, we have one final skip that we have to perform before making it to the final boss, and all we have to do is jump onto this rising platform, wedge ourselves next to this railing, and use the d-pad once again to charge into the wall which clips us into the boss. Now the final fight isn't too difficult for this game, but the AI can be pretty annoying in how they're placed, and all we have to do is headbutt these two buttons which spawn a wave of enemies, which we then have to use our football helmet and ground pound ability in order to destroy them. After killing a couple more waves of enemies, the mastermind behind the haunting joins in on the fight and in order to defeat him we just ground pound on his head and then headbutt him into the electric fence which stops our time. And that's the speedrun for Scooby Doo of 100 Frights. There are many different categories for this game involving different glitches as well as ones that involve much bigger skips, but I figured this one had a good combination of both. Thanks for watching and let me know what GameCube games you want to see next, as well as subscribe if you enjoyed seeing this game and want to see more.